Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope everybody's had a good week at work. Another dreary day outside, it looks like, in the morning, but maybe clearing up. Um, so being that we are getting past Halloween now, I figured this would be a great time to do my discussion on uh, cold and flu season. So I'm just going to pull up my notes here and we'll get started in a couple of seconds. And uh, I just really think this is important because we're going to discuss um, a lot of hot topics uh, and a lot of things that I've seen as a family physician over the years uh, that really irks me on um, antibiotic use and cold and flu and flu shots. And we're going to discuss all that today. Welcome, Charlie. Good morning, bud. I know you're always up bright and early, probably worked out already and did 500 other things. Uh, you're really an inspiration. So um, we're going to get started here. So, all right. How do we differentiate between a virus and a viral infection and a bacterial infection? Good morning, Ray, Juliet. Good morning. Um, so let's start this way. Okay, so we know that viruses and cold, uh, viruses and bacterial infections are completely different things. Good morning, Aunt Carol. Love you. Um, so a virus in general is affects the whole respiratory system so in other words when you get a virus you'll notice that or let's took the common cold and you know the flu is just really more a, a more serious virus that does very similar things to the common cold so good morning betsy uh, cold symptoms it usually starts with like a little bit of a sore throat or a scratchy throat right and then it progresses maybe your ears hurt your nose hurt your nose starts running gets congested, sinus pain, and then as it progresses, you usually will develop a cough, right, congestion, you know, feeling feeling weak, malaise, that's called, and sometimes, you know, plus or minus fever. Now, if you have the flu, you're going to have a fever, you're going to have body aches, right? So body aches are very specific usually for the flu, and body aches can make it confusing sometimes to differentiate between the flu and a bacterial infection, but I'm gonna make it easy for all of you. So bacterial infections, the way they work is the virus attacks the whole respiratory system and it replicates. So the virus is replicating. Uh, it's very good at evading your immune system and there's thousands and thousands of different viruses. So you know, you've heard about the adenovirus. Good morning, Paula and Betsy and James and Kristen and Carol Ann. Uh, so viruses attack the whole respiratory system, and they replicate, they evade the immune system. We've heard about adenovirus. There's thousands of different types of viruses, and each virus has a different strain, which is why, you know, you really don't develop an immunity, because every year you're catching a different virus, and it depends really what's out there. So because of that, you know, pretty much every year you're going to get a cold, and, and it usually is in the wintertime. You know, very often, you know, you don't get sick in the summertime. But in general, viruses attack the whole respiratory system. So you get a scratchy throat, your ears hurt, your eyes are watery, your nose is congested, you have a cough, so you have a whole bunch of symptoms. This is so important to recognize. When you have more than one symptom, so you have you know, ear pain and a sore throat and a runny nose and congestion and a headache and a cough, that's a virus, okay? Viruses are not treated by antibiotics. So please, I'm gonna repeat that. Viruses are not treated by antibiotics. Good morning, Val, I'm glad you joined me. I'm gonna ask you to chime in. Um, I don't know if, you, uh, if you're if you able to on your end, but maybe you can pop on for a little, a little while. Val is a good friend of mine, pharmaceutical rep, he's in pharmaceutical education. And um, so he is, uh, a very knowledgeable on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So antibiotics do not affect viruses. Chances are you go to the doctor, they give you a Z-Pack or another antibiotic, 
The ZPAC lasts five days. By that time, the virus was getting better on its own. But I can't stress how important this is because viruses, you know, they, as, as uncomfortable as they are, you know, they, they're, they're going to run their course and they're going to go away on its own. Your immune system is going to take care of it. A bacterial infection, on the other hand, is very, very concentrated and very specific. A typical bacterial infection, with a few exceptions, will attack one specific area. So, for example, if you have a sore throat and a fever, then it's usually a bacterial sore throat. If you have a sore throat and a runny nose and a cough, then it's usually a viral sore throat. So that's a really, really important distinction. Why? Because streptococcus or strep throat is extremely important to, to treat. Good morning, Helen, Chris, Alicia, Liz, and Stephanie. Um, so it, it's so important to differentiate between the two because what happens is if you take an antibiotic and you have a virus, all you're doing is killing your immune system. Every time you take an antibiotic, you are damaging your immune system. If you join me for my last talk, you heard me talk about the bowels and um, where how 90% or 80% of your immune system functions in your bowels. So your bowels have all of this good bacteria that are responsible for a healthy functioning immune system. When you take antibiotics, you not only kill the bad bacteria, you also kill the good bacteria. And unless you're on probiotics and, and, and you're going to take really high quality probiotics after taking antibiotics, you've now damaged your immune system and you are gonna be more susceptible to getting sick again. And I've heard it countless times, people telling me, my kids are always sick, right? My kids are always sick, why? Because they go to the doctor for an antibiotic for for a cold, they're given an antibiotic, probably because they're afraid of a lawsuit, and the antibiotic now kills their immune system. A lot of doctors don't believe in probiotics, don't believe they work, or they tell you to eat yogurt, which really doesn't have a significant amount of probiotics in it. And now that your child's immune system is you know, working at six, you know, 50 or 60 percent lower, especially if they're giving strong antibiotics. You know, especially, you know, cephalosporins, penicillin, the macrolides like Z packs aren't as bad, but you know, all of these, you know, uh, heavy antibiotics they kill the good bacteria. And when you take an antibiotic and you don't and you don't have a bacterial infection, you're creating bacterial resistance as well. And, and, you know, this is becoming a really huge problem in this country. I don't know if you're aware, but there are so many antibiotics now that, that used to work and now aren't working. And there's bacterial infections that we have no treatment for because of the judicious use of antibiotics. So if you have a cold, your doctor prescribes you an antibiotic, you kill your immune system, guess what? You get sick again. And sometimes you'll get a bacterial infection as a result of that. So it's so important to make this distinction, and that's why I wanted to do this talk. If you have a cold, I'm going to tell you some things that you can do when you first start feeling sick to, to prevent the cold from getting worse. But you're going to have to ride it out. Do not take antibiotics if you have a cold. Good morning, Margie, Helen, Carlos, and my mom and dad, and G. Good morning, everybody. So this is so important uh, to, to not take antibiotics. I'm going to tell you one of my pet peeves right now. I hear of people that say, I went to my pediatrician and my child was diagnosed with a double ear infection, which find me what that means in the medical literature, and a throat infection and a sinus infection. And he got antibiotics because he has all of these infections. And I say, no, your child has one viral infection that's affecting the sinuses and the throat and the ears. About 85% of ear infections are viral and they will go away on their own. So now your child gets antibiotics, hurts their immune system, and they get sicker and sicker and sicker. <clears throat> the, um, so this, this double ear infection or, you know, I have a throat infection and an ear infection and, and you know, a sinus infection, that, that, that's not the way it works. If you have a sinus infection, you're going to have sinus pain and pressure 
and usually a fever. If you have a throat infection, you're going to have a sore throat and a fever. If you have a bacterial ear infection, you're going to have an earache and a fever. If you have a lung infection, you're going to have a cough and a fever. You're not going to have the runny nose and the headache and the congestion. If you have all those symptoms, you have a virus. <coughs> I have allergies. So, so hey, good morning, Anthony. Uh, so, my, you heard my spiel on the double ear infection. So, please don't ever tell me that your child has double ear infection because there's no such thing. Um, okay, so. We went over uh, last week the gut and the immune system. So it's so important that after you take antibiotics, if you do have a bacterial infection or if you were prescribed antibiotics and you took them, you need to get on a good quality probiotic. Quality probiotics and typical typically have billions of strains of multiple different bacteria, right? You, the, the, the more variety you have, the better the probiotic. Most good probiotics should be refrigerated. That a good probiotic has live bacteria in it that's supposed to replenish the good bacteria in your bowels. If you, you know, are taking a, a, a pill that's been sitting on the shelf for six months, let's say, or in a warehouse, you know, chances are that the potency of that probiotic has been, you know, diminished. So get yourself a good refrigerated probiotic. Stores like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's carry good ones. You can order them online. They come refrigerated in a, you know, in a, in a, a refrigeration pack. Um, and, you know, there are some exceptions. There are some that are stable, but I still like the, pro the refrigerated probiotics the best. So the long-term effects of antibiotic use are, are not only, you know, a, a change in your immune system, but also bacterial resistance. And, um, you know, like I said before, there's so many bacteria out there now that we have no treatment for and people are dying in the hospital because you know they have a cold and they're given Levaquin or Cipro or something that's you know a drug that's really meant for pneumonia and really serious illnesses and these drugs have a lot of side effects especially the, um, the quinolone antibiotics Cipro and Levaquin these types of drugs are, are very strong and have a lot of side effects you get a tendon rupture you get liver problems so, uh, Betsy, yes, I'm going to recommend some products. If you stay tuned, I'm going to talk about what I do and what you should do. So, so, you know, stay away from antibiotics unless you really need them. If you need them, yes, take them. But then you have to start probiotics while you're taking the antibiotic. you got to space them apart. If you have questions about that, you can mes message me. And then um, do things to boost your immune system. Okay, so that's how we're going to get it. Good morning, Natalie and Teresa. So how can we, let's talk about prevention first, right? So, the, so we know the biggest prevention, right, is hand washing and, and, you know, being sanitary, you know, washing your hands, antibacterial hand cleansers. I'm not a big fan of because it can create some bacterial resistance. Um, probiotics, a question, probiotics on an empty stomach. It depends on the, on the product. Uh, you should really look, but in general, you want to take it on an empty stomach. And some people, if they've been on corticosteroids or they eat a lot of processed foods, the environment, uh, there's there's not a good environment for the bacteria to cling. So sometimes you need to take a prebiotic, which usually the main ingredient is something called inulin. It's almost spelled like insulin without the S. And it creates a healthy environment for the bacteria to grow. So some people do need a prebiotic as well as a probiotic. Okay, so a prebiotic is a is basically sets the the environment for a health for a, for an environment where the probiotic can stick and grow. So let's talk about hand washing. We talked about that. Other things, zinc. Zinc is a you know I, I you know I recommend starting zinc supplementation, 100 milligrams every day once the summer ends. It really will make a big difference in the number of colds that you get. That's one of my favorites, probiotics. I believe that people should be on probiotics all year round. I think that you should vary them. Every time you should buy a different brand. That's where you get more variety of good bacteria. Vitamin D. So vitamin D is essential for a healthy immune system. And the more and more research that comes out about vitamin D, we know that we get less sick in the summer. Why? Because we're more exposed to the sun. Our vitamin D levels tend to be higher. So again, before the, summer, before the winter comes, make sure your vitamin D levels are high enough. 
you need to get a 25 hydroxy or 25 OH vitamin D3 level. That level, the normal range is like somewhere between 30 and 100. I see people come back with a level of 35 and their doctor says, oh, that's normal. Or they say, oh, it's normal, I don't need vitamin D. You need an optimal level of vitamin D. Your level needs to be around 85 to 100. You want to be on the higher end of normal for vitamin D. You don't want to go over because it's a fat-soluble vitamin and you could have toxicity, but you also do not want to take too little. So that's the biggest mistake with vitamin D I see is just misreading the labs. Vitamin C is okay. You know, we know that vitamin C has been kind of always a mainstay of a cold. You got to take really high doses, but high doses can lead to kidney stones. But um, we know vitamin C, magnesium, vitamin E, B6, vitamin A, selenium, right? So you don't want to take all these pills. So I recommend a good probiotic uh, and antibi uh, probiotic and multivitamin and mineral combination. I have some really good products that I recommend. I don't promote products in, during these talks, but if you have a, a question about a specific uh, product that you want to know I recommend. I have several that you can ask me about. So um, there are several products that contain both your probiotic, your omegas, and your vitamins, multivitamins and minerals. Now, not everybody needs a multivitamin, but if you're not eating, you know, all of your servings of fruits and vegetables every day and, you know, tend to eat a lot of uh, non-organic foods, then probably should take a good multivitamin and mineral. Make sure it contains magnesium. It's going to contain, obviously, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E. And then you should also supplement vitamin D3, which um, I recommend most people need 5,000 IUs daily. But again, get your level checked and be at the higher end of the normal limit. Okay, airborne, it's okay. It's not a very high-quality uh, vitamin, mass-produced. Um, probably been sitting on the shelf for months, so I'm not a big fan of that product. You want to take a good quality multivitamin mineral. You want to take a probiotic. Good morning, Nelson, Jill, and Dan. Um, so, so to summarize this, okay, zinc, I would supplement separately. I want to, You want to take 100 milligrams of zinc. You want to take a good probiotic. You want to take vitamin D3. And then you want to take a good multivitamin mineral that contains vitamin C, vitamin A, magnesium, selenium. So that will give you all of the things you need. Now, as far as herbal treatments for prevention, echinacea is a very popular one, which I like. Elderberry, which is uh, very high in bioflavonoids, even higher than you see in blueberries and other berries. Um, good morning, Anthony. Um, Oil of oregano, also a great uh, prevention. Oil of oregano is a natural antiviral. You know, you may smell like a pizza for a little while, but that's okay. You know, if you're Italian, people are used to you smelling like garlic and oregano anyhow. So, um, But oil of oregano is very potent. It works on viruses in certain cases. I've used oil of oregano treatments to treat yeast in people's bowels. So oil of oregano is very potent. It's a great thing to have on hand. You need only a couple of drops. Curcumin or turmeric, which is a great overall anti-inflammatory. It's great for joint pain as well. So these are all the things that you can take, especially if you feel something coming on. But in general, a smart thing to do would be to get these things and start them right after the, you know, once the cold weather starts, because that's when the virus and the cold season comes out. Another thing, that most importantly, which you know I'm a big proponent of, is just eat nutrient-dense foods. Eat a lot of greens, right? You, you want to eat a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables, and berries and things like that. Your produce should be organic, whatever you can. If you can't afford all organic, then look up the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen is an app that you get on your phone. It's the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And the Dirty Dozen are the 12 most heavily sprayed pesticide fruits and vegetables, okay? Berries are almost number one, uh, and apples almost every year, but it, it varies from year to year. And then the Clean 15 are... 15 non-heavily sprayed fruits and vegetables, so those you don't necessarily have to get organic. Those usually include bananas and oranges. But again, check that out. You can download that app onto your phone. Um, so eat nutrient-dense foods, load up on them, a lot of garlic, onion, you know, spices, turmeric, all of these things help, you know, our antioxidants and help boost your immune system. Okay, flu shots. Um, 
here's my feeling of flu shots. I think that people who have risk for um, for respiratory disease, people who are in the hospital, um, I believe that you know uh, children with asthma who you know have uh, you know respiratory issues definitely should get a flu shot. Um, healthy people, you know, it, you know, it's it's your call. Um, I know it's you know there's there's a lot of controversy about it. Uh, you know, there are some some you know there are heavy metals in the flu shot, which I don't like. The other thing about the flu shot is. Um, you know, it's kind of a guess every year, and it doesn't necessarily. It's done through epidemiology, which they look at different um, different strains and what's around. So it ne doesn't necessarily work for the strain of the flu that might, you might get. But uh, in general, if you do have you know severe respiratory illness, if you know tend to to get you know to to be immunocompromised, definitely. And then you know I'll you know leave it to up to you if you don't have those issues and you're healthy. Uh, my feeling is that just boosting a, 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 your own immune system is much more effective because it covers all strength, right? So that's my feeling on the flu shot. Um, okay. Other things you can do. Now, therapies when you're sick. So let's talk about traditional therapies like Mucinex, which is a uh, mucolytic, right, guaifenesin, uh, expectorants, cough suppressants, so things like dextromethorphan, and then you got uh, your your antihistamines like uh, uh, diphenhydramine. So these are all the things, and they all the cold and and cough remedies have combinations of these different things. So these are all symptomatic care. They you know, and they don't necessarily do anything. Um, you know, they can help. The best mucolytic is water, staying hydrated. Good morning, Joe. Uh, who else just joined? Good morning, Sarah and Mike, and I think I saw Nelson. Hey, good morning, Jill. If I didn't say good morning, if I missed you, I apologize. Um, so I'm not a big fan of these over-the-counter remedies. There's some studies that show they actually make pro can prolong, like especially cough suppressants. You know, I don't like uh, uh, suppressing a cough. Um, I think that you should try to get that, that stuff out of your lungs. Uh, but the best mucolytic, the best thing to break up thick mucus is water, staying hydrated. Julie, does juicing help? Yes, juicing does help because you're getting the nutrients out of your foods, right? You're, um, it's a good thing to juice. You're getting more nutrient-dense foods. You're not adding sugar and things like that, so it's less processed. Other things is saline, you know, using a neti pot or saline nose spray to clean out the bacteria from your nose area. Um, I saw, good morning, Linda. I saw a study on hydrogen peroxide that was done back in the 50s and now is coming back into credence. You know, gargling with hydrogen peroxide and water or even just putting hydrogen peroxide drops in your ear will actually get through the membrane, some of it, and it will actually kill some bacteria and viruses in your ear canal and then will travel down your station tubes into your throat. So hydrogen peroxide, just drop it in your ear or you know, for a sore throat, gargle, gargle with it, and you can mix it with water. Good morning, Gina and Linda. Um, drinking plenty of water, again, that's a mucolytic. Vitamin D, at the first sign of a cold or, or you know, maybe a bacterial infection, at the first sign that you're getting sick, I would recommend um, taking 25,000 IUs of vitamin D for three days. Really blast your system. Now, the normal dose is about 5,000, so I would take five pills for three days when you start to get that scratchy throat or you feel it coming on. Also, you want to make sure that you have zinc on board. So if you're not on that 100 milligrams of zinc, take zinc as well. Zinc has been proven to shorten the duration of colds. That's um, coldies and the zinc lozenges, those things that have the nasal swabs, those are all things that contain zinc. But you want to get zinc from, you know, food sources as well, like nuts. You know, raw nuts are a great source of zinc. Um, good morning, Marie. Uh, apple cider vinegar, great, because it contains probiotics, right? You take a little shot, get the raw, unfiltered um, apple cider vinegar, do a shot of that. You could buy it in pill form, too, if you don't like, if you can't, if you can't do uh, the, the shots. Um, raw honey should be raw, unfiltered. Raw honey, right? Organic. Uh, honey never goes bad. It's one of the few foods that you can leave on the shelf and it's kind of almost like in a liquid form and it doesn't rot. 
Uh, honey is very good, but it should be raw honey. Manuka honey is a very good type of honey. It kind of coats your throat. It's great for a post-nasal drip. So that's a good one. Coconut oil. You know, cooking with coconut oil is great. Um, it's a, is a great remedy. Um, going back to over-the-counter stuff, of all, of all the things that I've seen work the most is the Vicks Vapor Rub. You know, a little menthol and eucalyptus on the chest and under the nose actually does help. So that's a good one. That's an old-fashioned remedy, but that one works. Um, coconut oil we mentioned. So coconut oil, you can eat it in its raw form or you can just cook with it. You know, very high in um, – it's a, it's a nutrient-dense – Food, it's a healthy fat, a big fan of that. And uh, everybody's gonna like this one, chicken soup, homemade chicken soup, right? There's something about the warm broth and uh, obviously the vegetables that actually will help a cold. So chicken soup works. A tablespoon of apple cider vinegar every morning with water also helps me as an anti-inflammatory. Great point, Joe, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely, apple cider vinegar is I recommend people take that every day. Why? It also is, uh, um, if you get the raw and filter, it actually provides some good bacteria as well. I'm a big fan of apple cider vinegar. You could, uh, you could use lemon, cinnamon too. You could do a little cocktail. Um, I have a cocktail if people are interested. Um, chicken soup, okay. So, um, and, you know, then just, you know, rest, taking care of your bodies, getting enough sleep. Even mo moderate exercise, okay? Unless you have a really high, high fever, you should still continue to exercise if you have a cold. I mean, you don't want to spread your germs too much. But, you know, if you could work out at home, do some push-ups, do some crunches, get the heart rate beating, right? It'll, it'll open up your lungs. It'll help you cough up, um, cough up mucus. Uh, Linda, so uh, what about vitamin C? Vitamin C is okay. Um, it's... Not as good as vitamin D. The studies are showing that, you know, you really need a very high doses of vitamin C for it to be effective. And the caveat to that is that vitamin C can cause kidney stones in high doses. But vitamin C is definitely on my list. But you can get that in your multivitamin. I'm not a big fan of high doses. You could, you know, there are super high doses you could take for things like cancer and in other inflammatory conditions. But that's a, a different topic. So um, cocktail recipe. Um, apple cider vinegar, lemon, and um, you can add a little cinnamon to that and just do a shot of that. So that's my little um, morning cocktail that you could do. Okay, so when are antibiotics necessary? So if you have a fever and or if you have cold symptoms that persist, sometimes people get a cold and then they'll get on top of that a bacterial infection. That could be a little bit more complicated. But in general, cold is going to last anywhere from five to 14 days. Now, if you have a persistent fever, that's something you should look into. Uh, when you have a low-grade fever, I'm not a big fan of actually taking, um, maybe in children, but you know, but in, even even in children, but you know, uh, if if you're a little uncomfortable, like if you have a low-grade fever, which is under 101, um, it's it's not a bad idea to to just let the fever, you know, t be there. You don't want a high fever because high fevers, especially in kids, can cause seizures and make you feel very uncomfortable. But low-grade fevers, the reason you have a fever, it's an immune response. Your body raises its temperature that actually helps kill off the bacteria and the viruses because the viruses are very specific. Viruses like 98.7, right? Your body triggers that there's a virus or something foreign and your, and, your, and your immune system releases these chemicals that cause you to have a fever. The purpose of those chemicals and the purpose of the fever is to raise the temperature so that the virus can no longer proliferate. And a lot of people don't know that. They say, oh, fever, take Motrin right away or take Tylenol right away. I'm not a big fan of Tylenol. Tylenol actually can hurt your immune system. It's very toxic on the liver. I like uh, Motrin as a better treatment for fever in general. Um, but, you know, if you have a low-grade fever, ride out the fever. It's actually helping your body get rid of what you have. So, again, if your fever's under 101, try to ride it out a little bit. If you're very uncomfortable, then take something, you know, take a cool bath or use a cool rag, but the fever is helping your immune system. Good morning, Dan Ford. Um, other times, if you suspect strep, strep is a very, very dangerous bacteria. We're learning so much about strep 
and what it does to the body. Um, there's something called pandas, which I'm going to do a talk about, which is a very, very serious thing. Um, pandas is a pediatric autoimmune neurologic disorder associated with strep. Um, it's been around a long time. A lot of kids who have ticks, ADHD, actually have pandas. Um, it's, it's due to a, a, an antibody that forms similar to um, uh, strep-related arthritis, strep-related glomerulonephritis, which is a kidney disorder. These antibodies from the strep can actually attack the body. This antibody in pandas actually attacks the brain. So it's very important to try to rep recognize strep early. So it might not be a good, a bad idea if you, um, funny, Julie, I'm gonna, Julie posted a panda bear. When uh, Dr. Dornfeld and I um, first started uh, diagnosing pandas, when you researched it on the internet, that's all you got was pictures of panda bears. And now it's actually recognized by the American Academy of Pediatrics. So um, again, Dr. David Dornfeld, my mentor and good friend, um, was diagnosing this many, many years ago. And now it's, uh, it's very common. So strep, it's not a bad idea to go get the strep test, right? So if you wanna to go to the doctor, you're feeling sick, the most important thing they could do is that strep test, especially if you have a sore throat. If you don't have strep, most likely you don't need an antibiotic. So that's, a, that's an important distinction. So if you have strep, you do need an antibiotic. You need to finish the course, don't save them. Uh, they're finding a lot of kids with, uh, you know, that have developed pandas. It's because they had incomplete um, courses of antibiotics. So that's extremely important to finish your antibiotic. If your doctor tells you to take the antibiotic for seven days, take it to se for seven days. If they tell you five days, take it for five days. Don't save some pills for the next time you get sick because you're doing yourself more harm than good. Get on uh, a probiotic if you're on an antibiotic. So strep infections are important. There are other infections, one in, in particular mycoplasma. That one is a little confusing and, and uh, mycoplasma can um, mimic a virus. It doesn't usually cause the runny nose though, but it can cause like a sore throat and an earache and, and a fever. So that's, that's something that can be difficult to diagnose, but in general, it's rare. Uh, it's very easy to treat with like a macrolide, like a Zithromax will work for that. There are some resistant strains out there though. Um, so uh, it's very important to distinguish between strep if you have a sinus infection, right? So if you've developed after a cold, typically really severe sinus pain, but the cough is gone and you have headaches or very specific pain over one area. So remember, bacterial infections are are focalized, right? So if you have your right cheek, right, that's painful and you have a fever and you don't feel well, that's usually a bacterial infection. A viral sinus infection is gonna affect all your sinuses. So that's a, another important distinction. So it, uh, I'm not against antibiotics, but I'm against treating viruses with antibiotics because it's really causing a huge problem in the country. Which antibiotics should I use? Okay, you always wanna try to use the, the, the the, the, uh, the antibiotic that's going to be the most specific for the bug that you think it is, and the one that's going to be, uh, be uh, the least harmful on your body. I've seen so many people get Cipro or Leviquin for a cold or even for a, uh, you know, a, a, a tooth infection or um, sinus infection. These drugs are so strong, two, two or three doses of Leviquin can wipe out all of the bacteria, good bacteria in your bowels. You could develop something called Clostridium difficile or C. diff. It's, it's, it's bad. Clindamycin is another really strong, bad antibiotic. If you're allergic to penicillin, some dentists give clindamycin. There's other choices. You can get tested. If you, you're told that you have a penicillin allergy but never really had an allergic reaction, get tested for it. Because if your doctors, get, if you're taking clindamycin for a tooth infection or pre-dental, it, 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 two doses of clindamycin will completely wipe out your gut. I've seen so many people get so sick from clindamycin. So you wanna take the antibiotic that's gonna be the most specific where you have. I like cephalosporins, first and second generation you know, less broad spectrum antibiotics. You don't want to kill a mouse with an elephant gun, right? Just because an antibiotic's strong doesn't mean you should use it. You want to use the antibiotic that's specific for what you have. You want to take probiotics. You still want to eat healthy. You want to take antioxidants. You want to do all of these healthy things. Um, 
So you want to be very, very careful with what antibiotics you take. Also, quinolones, Cipro, Levaquin, those types of drugs, they can cause tendon rupture. So if you're an athlete and you're taking these antibiotics, you could actually cause a very serious injury. Um, so, you know, just be careful. Uh, talk to your doctor about your concerns, um, you know, and, and, and for your children, those of you who have young children, you know, don't put them on an antibiotic for every little cold and cough that they get. Be diligent about diagnosing strep, okay? So th th those are the major points. Um, and again, uh, if you would like my, my services, uh, this week I'm offering a special till next Friday, which is if you buy a coaching package of five or more sessions, and my coaching packages are very reasonable, I'm giving 50% off on all of the packages. Some of the things that I do, which are interesting to people, uh, I work uh, al um, not along with, but I, I have a lot of my customers do the 23andMe, which is a genetic test that um, gives you a, lets you know what your genetic predisposition is to certain illnesses, like if you have methylation issues and things like that. So um, Jill was on clindamycin for two weeks. Get on a really strong probiotic. Call me later. There's a lot of things that you need to do about that. Veronica, good morning. So my coaching services, so a lot of times I will consult with you, find out what your family history is, talk to you about your medical issues, your health concerns, your wellness concerns. Um, I like, I'd like for my customers to get the 23andMe or the Ancestry.com uh, type of genetic, medical genetic testing. And then I design a wellness program based on your, your current medical issues, your genetics, um, and then I will order, work with your doctor to order this, the proper blood testing as well. A lot of specific testing specific for what your needs and what your genetics are. Uh, pretty soon, I'll be collaborating with some other people and we'll be offering hair analysis for uh, heavy metal toxicity and the um, comprehensive digestive and stool analysis that I mentioned in my last talk. So health coaching is a really, really beneficial thing. Um, I do it because I love it. I make it affordable for everybody, but it's something that you should think about. You know, it's an advocate. I have a free text messaging service. So if you have questions, you can text and that's absolutely free. You can text and you'll get an answer if, you know, what foods could you, you know, should you eat if you're going out to a restaurant and you're on my nutrition program, those types of things. Or if you have questions about specific medical issues, you could just send a text and get an answer. Good morning, Rodrigo. Um, so, you know, my health coaching packages, I think, you know, offer a lot. And um, if you could share my videos, it would be greatly appreciated. And my last announcement is that you can now find all of my videos on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, just do a search for Dr. Lucente. And also I have a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Dr. Lucente. Eventually I'm going to be doing all these talks on that site and not on my personal site. So if you can like and join that page, that would be greatly appreciated as well. So everybody have a healthy cold and flu season, you know, replay this video, take notes, do all of these things, have yourself a nice, healthy winter, enjoy the Christmas season, you know, don't have a, a house full of sick people. And uh, if you have questions or about specific products or supplements, please reach out to me and consider doing my wellness packages, which include, you know, you know, genetic assessments and, um, you know, biometric assessments. So uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you all for joining me. I really, really enjoy seeing you all here and I appreciate, you know, everybody's support so much. I've gotten so much love and support. I really, really appreciate it. Have a great, great weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.